All right. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to talk about my uh, my time working on uh, Gravity, the movie. Um, uh, the title v "VFX of Gravity" is um, is really just something that I contributed to. The main sort of um, uh, builders of the VFX uh, of Gravity are are these three. So this is uh, Fonso Cuarón, uh, the director. Um, this is Chivo uh, Emmanuel Lubetsky, who's the um, cinematographer, and then this is Tim Weber, um, who is the visual effects supervisor. And um, <clears throat> you know, I I worked on a bunch of movies um, before this. Um, and this was the and been on a bunch of sets and this was the first time that i really felt like the three of these were, were really true peers um uh and so that was a change um from earlier movies where vfx was kind of a, a more of a supporting role um and you know this is a very ambitious movie um uh to to, to create and uh, and it only would have been possible if, if they had been um so collaborative um these three um as well, major stars are um, Framestore. Um, a bunch of these people were the onset um, down in the center here were some, some of the people that I interacted with quite a bit um, during the, the production. Um, but the, the CG on this movie is just uh, really kind of next level and took them a long time. And, um, you know, it's a large group effort. So, um, uh, you know, thanks for the intro. I mean, uh, I, I, my background is both in computer graphics uh, and then later in, in robotics. Um, so I spent a long time um, kind of in design, worked actually on John Dykstra's uh, Spider-Man um, long ago and, uh, and then a variety of movies after that. Um, and then shifted over into robotics um, once, once um, Gravity kind of kicked off. Um, <clears throat> one of the main components about the VFX of this movie really was, was um, and one of the main improvements from from uh, sort of previous systems was this box of light. So called the, the light box. And this was um, a way that um, that Framestore and um, and the team had built to light and basically light um, the talent. So Sandra uh, Bullock was um, basically you know flying around doing all these kind of dynamic moves in a zero zero g environment and really the only thing that um that we were tasked with shooting was anything inside of her helmet so um you can see that everything is very is like tracking tracking markers active tracking markers and then sort of wrapped in this box of light and the really um you know the big big step change here was this interactive light and this is a good good panel that shows it you know we've got the um the sparking of the off of the solar panels and we're getting these hits in her in her and highlights in her in her face so being able to produce a uh, really uh, realistic interactive light on her face um, was really the whole name of, of the game for for the components that, that uh i was involved in um <clears throat> so this is a close-up of the of the led screen these were Sort of much older, um, earlier versions of what is now being used on the Mandalorian, which are much higher, uh, higher pitch. Um, these were pretty wide pitched um, panels, but they were very bright and um, and they had uh, kind of really nice colors. Um, so you know, as as is is done now on, on the Mandalorian and other and other movies, um, this the advantage of the of the box of light is you can see the, the talent can see. Uh, what's going on around them, and then they also get get this interactive light. Um, we were not using any of the pixels that you see in the actual shots. We were just lighting uh, lighting her, and so in order to to get this really um, dynamic choreography between um, Sandra's face and um, you know and and the camera, um, you had to move the camera in really um, fully sixed off you know ways. We had to be able to go uh, at high rates of speed because she would be blowing by camera. Um, uh, really quickly, and we'd have to come in and and, uh, and come really close to her face, and then stop and turn around and jam. Um, and so we had to be able to synchronize the movement of the panels of, of the LED wall, and um, and Sandra herself um, in the spacesuit. So there was this this tilt plus rig that um, that was developed that could give um, three axes of motion. She could spin around um, really quickly, and um, 
and you know, while keeping her um, you know, comfortable and safe in, in the interior of the, of the light box. Um, this is sort of her view out into the stage. Um, <clears throat> and there you can see a big um, six doff um, KUKA arm with a remote head on it and then a long um, sort of 10 meter track. Uh, and so this configuration um, along with panels that could open and close on the light box is sort of the main, um, the main event that shot the most amount of shots uh, that happened on the robot. Um, it, it's something like the bulk of the movie um, over 50%. Um, so, you know, the, the beginning was it was much simpler. This is um, sort of from the test uh, on the early days um, where the, uh, we've got a, a robot here that you can't see um, in the corner that's holding a light. And then we've got the camera down on this, on this KUKA um, uh, painted safety orange, <clears throat> the way they come from the factory. Um, and, and this shot is where she's spinning end over end and the light um, is wrapping around and, um, and, and you know, orbiting her basically. And so this was the, uh, one of the critical scenes that they wanted to test to, to show the viability of, um, of this uh, kind of technology. Um, the the uh, the story is that they hit they actually greenlit this movie or initially started to pitch this movie as you know it's just going to be her we're just going to shoot her faces we could just do this on an office chair right we could just in a black room an office chair and uh, you know as these things uh, do it sort of expanded out from there and uh, they started to rope in all these different um, technologies to solve their solve their various problems um, <clears throat> so after this test um, which was a um, Kind of a limited capacity um, in, in its ability. Um, uh, I set to work um, building out the set of tools that were needed to, to turn this into a kind of a production tool on a on a film. Um, you know, I'd, I'd spent a long time doing previs and and shots and everything, and so uh, you know knew that um, you know as as was being described in the previous panel, like you know flying around with your hands. And turning that into a motion um, on an actual uh, end effector or on a camera is, you know, is is, is, is a big big gap, and so it, um, we were really focusing um, on getting there to be preview tools in Maya, having a way that you could just directly program the bots in Maya, you know, attach your camera um, directly to or, or the end effector in the robot uh, directly to previous cameras because the this movie had entirely been shot um, in advance in previs. And uh, so, you know, huge amount of work to make sure that there were uh, accurate representations of what was going on, um, that we could control one or many bots in real time uh, and um, so that they could be coordinated and that we had coordination of many other kinds of devices. So we were also coordinating the, the, the location of the, um, of the, the CG that was wrapping in the light box, for instance, that was in touch designer and we were kind of feeding time values into that system. Um, and as well as tools that would allow us to um, sort of bend time or slow down elements and, and work uh, kind of performance into, into what was going on in the robots. And I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Um, so, you know, he, here we've got some of the robot tools on the, on the bottom right, which were, you know, Checking limits, seeing if you if you were uh, accelerating too far too fast or or moving too fast. So this is clearly not a good <laughs> a good moment in this shot. Um, and then sort of interface tools to be able to play and stop, rewind, go to particular frames, um, and all that sort of thing. And so you know, remember we're controlling not just the one robot, but um, her on the on the tilt plus rig and everything, so that you could go to frame four hundred and seventy five and bring everything safely. Uh, in in smooth motion um, to that one particular frame, and so then you could check cues, you could you could touch up lighting. Um, you know, this we, we developed over the the initial series, you know, initial sort of six weeks or a couple months, um, you know, pretty good workflow that uh, that got through, and, and were able to do touch ups and adjustments. Um, you know pretty quickly because we had Maya running and we were just exporting moves to the to to the um, to the bots and the whole stage. Um, this is a exterior shot of the of the stage. Um, this is this giant behemoth <laughs> light box with the open little panels. Um, she was sitting there, steered pen. Um, you know, an example of a kind of a dynamic shot. She's um, moving quick. Um, 
you know, George also got in the box, same thing. He's hilarious. Um, <clears throat> so one of the important things uh, was that the motion or the movement of the, of the bots could be really well um, coordinated and that we could have interactions with the performance that actors have. Um, and so previous systems had been very rigid. You just sort of press play and then it would, it would run its time and then you were kind of done. And you might, you'd have to kind of tune the move, you know, laying down you know, tracks as John Miller was saying, um, you know, sort of one axis at a time or um, to get your final kind of performance. And then, and then you're, you're kind of good and you can do multi, multi pass that way. But in this scenario, we have actors who are, um, who are interacting with and, and performing. And so this is an example of the, the death scene for, for Clooney or the, the kind of release scene. And so there we had um, you know, built a, a kind of a time override knob that I could slow down time. And so I was um, you know, a part of this, of this um, particular shot, for instance, where we could, um, you know, if he was, looked like he was gonna, gonna drift um, at one particular moment or when he let go, then we could actually um, uh, release the rest of the motion at that point. Um, uh, this is the hardest shot. Um, this is kind of the womb shot or when, right, right when she gets into the ISS and takes off her spacesuit. Um, super highly coordinated uh, motion uh, from, from performance um, with Sandra. The, um, she's sitting on a bicycle seat that's, that's um, attached to, the, to it's a, basically a robot axis. Um, so she's being moved. Um, this back leg is, is really the only way she's being held on. That was, that was um, redone in CG. And then this portal was, was attached to one robot uh, and the hard light, the sunlight was attached to another robot. Uh, and then obviously the camera is another one. So the camera's rolling so that, cause she's, she's spinning relative to the, to the portal. Um, and then there are these really critical um, performance aspects of, because the sun has to cross right behind her um, right at the right moment so that we don't get a blast of sun directly in, in, in the lens, but that it's just behind her and rimming, uh, rim lighting her. Um, so, you know, working with um, pretty amazing um, perfectionists, uh, you know, Chiva really um, did an amazing job, um, you know, guiding uh, all of the, all the lighting of, of the real um, things. And he's, it was, it was just, at such a higher level than, uh, than I, you know, I'd, I'd find a bunch of shots in my day um, and uh, I thought I had a fairly good set of eyes, but um, you know, the first day when he realized that he got true interactive light out of the box, he jumped up and was saying, you know, take that recording, send that to Fincher. He didn't think we could do it. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it was just, it was just incredible to, to, to be around and, and be a part of the, you know, this, the team. Tim and, um, and everybody. So um, yeah, that's, I guess about my time. Um, you know, uh, here, here I am uh, on the day. Um, so, you know, reach out if, you, if this kind of thing interests you. Um, love to, love to talk.